Hello guys welcome back to our anime explainer. Today is explanation of upcoming episode Throne of Seal based on novel. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's start. Grasping the swords in his hands, Long Houchen looked in the direction of his comrades, silently rejoicing, illusory paradise, I am coming. Over the past month, the southern mountain city had regained part of its vigor, but the casualties were still in everyone's mind. Not long before, this had after all been the location of a devastating battle. Currently, the defenses of Southern Mountain City were obviously astonishing, after all, many elites were residing inside the city. In total, there were the Saint Knight Regiment from the Knight Temple, three Emperor Grade Demon Hunt squads, and four King Grade Demon Hunt squads, as well as hundreds of powerhouses of the six Great Temples, all guarding the borders of the Southern Mountain City. Over the past month, the second batch of reinforcements had already arrived in the Southern Mountain City. Even if the demons attacked once more, they were prepared to respond in kind. Half of the destroyed magic cannons had already been repaired whereas the heavily damaged ones would be directly replaced with new ones. But of course, this required time. The Auxiliary Master of the Priest Temple, Ling Xiao, and the Auxiliary Master of the Knight Temple, Han Qian, were standing in the middle of the ranks, scrutinizing the horizon. At their backs were ten youths clad in martial attire, and among them, Long Haochen and Kia. The competition had already ended, and Long Houchen and Kia both obtained the right to enter the illusory paradise with the performances they showed. Now that the awaited day had arrived, they were about to explore that mysterious place, they are here, Han Qian said in low voice. From afar, a formless oppressive feeling slowly emerged. Upon closing the distance, everyone saw a heap of black clouds rapidly heading in their direction. Gazing into the distance, Long Houchen couldn't help but shiver. This wasn't any kind of black clouds. Those were black dragons, personal guard of the demon god emperor. And they weren't low in quantity. The black dragons approached gradually, descending slowly before reaching the ground, at a distance of a thousand meters from the forces of the Temple Alliance. Long Houchen counted them, learning to his surprise that there were three black dragons, among which the tallest reached a size of forty meters. On their backs they carried dozens of other demons. To be qualified to ride on the black dragons, they could obviously not be ordinary demons. After the three black dragons landed on the ground, a strong aura of darkness assaulted everyone's senses. The black haze hiding them from view rapidly shrank, as they shrank to the shape of robust humans, heading in the direction of the Temple Alliance's forces. Approaching the vanguard was a tall, charming and imposing middle-aged man. Before transforming, he had also been the the most imposing black dragon of the three. The most extraordinary thing was that the two by his side weren't part of the Black Dragon's Imperial Guard, but two purple-haired and purple-eyed extremely handsome middle-aged men. Against all expectations, Long Houchen had already seen these two before. It shocked him even more to find out that they were two of the four most imposing demons he saw back then in the Moon Palace. They were the right arms of the Moon Demon God, that could be said to be like one among ten thousand in the Moon Demon Clan. Behind these three came the other two members of the Imperial Black Dragon Guard, and Moon Demon Clan powerhouses, as well as a dozen orange-haired and orange-eyed people, who looked like humans on the outside, but radiated an ephemeral feeling. These were people from the Star Demon Clan, and looking at them, Long Houchen could guess what their identities were. The Star Demon God was the great prophet of the demons, and his clansmen were also the best mags among demons. They were among the rarely seen kind of dual types, being both magician and warrior, but because of this, their magic was even more powerful. No one had expected that for the exploration of the illusory paradise, the top three demon races would all dispatch powerhouses. And seeing such an army, it could easily be said that they would certainly have a good chance to besiege the southern mountain's gate. That's right, this time, not a single demon god came, however, these demon powerhouses' strength was mostly comparable with that of demon gods in the second half of the rankings. In fact, more than a tenth of the demon god emperor's imperial black dragon guard had come today. That was the absolute power of the demon god emperor. The leader of the imperial black dragon guard calmly replied, there's no meaning in trying to overwhelm your side with an overkill of strength only to show off. According to the agreement, let's do things properly. His majesty, being so magnanimous, has agreed to your offer. Now it should be your turn to comply. Ling Xiao didn't stop being on alert, just because of his counterpart's frankness. On the opposite, he felt shivers run down his spine. With the leader of the Imperial Black Dragon forces being so calm and steady, he will definitely not be easy to handle, come with us. 
Right after saying that, Ling Xiao waved his hand. Immediately, a few enormous green creatures approached unhurriedly from the side, stamping the ground with their massive weight. These were green pengs, magical beasts of the seventh rank. Although their defensive and offensive abilities were not that strong, they had a formidable build, even exceeding those black dragons of the Imperial Army in size. They were experts in long-distance flight and carrying weight, and only the priest temple raised them, since after all, priests were rather weak physically, and unable to travel on mounts for long distances. A total of ten green pengs approached, crawling on the ground. Led by Ling Xiao, the human powerhouses mounted the green pengs, and headed north. The imperial black dragon guards, changed back to their dragon form. After their powerhouses mounted them, they followed closely behind, maintaining a distance of approximately one kilometer from the green pengs. Among the ten people dispatched by the alliance there was, aside from Kia, yet another acquaintance of Long Haochen. The captain of the 8th general grade demon hunt squad, Zhong Fang Fang, had also managed to win an entry permission to the illusionary paradise. He was surprisingly at the peak of the sixth step, and had managed to come out victorious after his past hardships. At that moment, Long Haochen wasn't calm at all. While Ling Xiao and Huang Shuo were conversing, he had spotted two familiar faces, and was sure that the other party had also seen him. Those were Yu Yi and Ling Xiao. The two of them actually participated in this time's operation, and from what Long Haochen knew about them, he was absolutely sure that they were going to enter the illusory palace with him. Long Haochen knew about Yu Yi's identity, and also had some guesses about Ling Xiao. He was just surprised because he didn't expect that Ling Xiao too would have such a high position among the demons. The day before, Ling Xiao had extremely seriously shared very detailed information regarding the illusory paradise to all the participants of the operation. This key information had been gained by the loss of countless human lives. Kia said in a low voice, Houchen, don't worry. We will give her some help when the time comes and she will be fine. Long Houchen gave Kia a surprised look, Kia calmly continued, she carries the seal from the dagger of samsara unleashed by my spiritual stove of samsara inside of her body. So her life or death is within my grasp. There's no need to fear any of her tricks. To our future course of actions, this woman will be important, so we cannot let her die here. Kia's words helped Long Houchen to strengthen his resolve. In response, he nodded to her. The illusory shrine was located 60 kilometers to the north of the southern mountain city, inside of a forest. Be it the green pengs or the black dragons, this was a distance that only took a few blinks of an eye to cover. From a distance, a large area of dense forest could entirely be seen in their line of sight. Looking down at the vegetation of the forest from the sky, they could all sense the large scale that this forest had reached. This could have only been accomplished through several thousand years of growth. Under Ling Xiao's indications, the green pengs slowly landed outside of the forest. As everyone successively dismounted the green pengs, the demons did the same. Accompanied by the two devil kings from the moon demon clan, Huang Shuo asked in a low voice, why are we not directly entering by flight? Ling Xiao replied with a snort, you can try if you want. This land belongs to the scope of the illusory shrine, which is the shrine the goddess of nature left. And this forest is sheltered by this same goddess of nature. You want to directly enter by flight. It's too early for you, but your demon god emperor should be able to. Huang Shuo calmly replied, let's just go then. The two of them led their respective groups, advancing inside the forest. When they entered the forest, the atmosphere instantly changed but it was not the impression of feeling fresh and clean air. A sweet insipid scent penetrated into their hearts, as if cleaning their spirit, and this hard-to-describe feeling of serenity caused everyone to feel exceptionally cozy. The sounds of the birds and insects was extremely distinct, and the water, earth and light elemental fluctuations were extremely strong. Long Houchen had the strongest impression from that. When he took his first step into the forest, he immediately had a feeling of warmth, as if heading back home. It was as if everything there was beautiful, and had a feeling of intimacy for him. Every blade of grass and every tree was smiling to him, and the light element surrounded him softly. Water and earth elemental particles were also spiraling around him, moistening his body. With such a splendid feeling, Long Houchen felt that his spirit was cleansed over and over again, as all his negative feelings and worries faded away peacefully. Indistinctly, a layer of mildly transparent light covered his skin. It was as if the call of nature made him feel as light as feather. Being near him, Kia immediately felt the changes on Long Houchen's body. She also had a similar reaction, but it was nowhere as intense as Long Houchen's. After all, he was the sign of light, and since the growth of vegetation was intricately linked to light, 
the call of nature didn't manifest only through sensation for him, but through real magic effects. It was one of the gentlest forms of existing magic, and able to provide an enormous amplification to his elemental affinity, while also weakening him to some extent. The current Long Houchen was just like Kia at the time she had first entered the Tower of Eternity. Right at this moment, his soul was not only filled with insights of understanding, but just flooded with warmth. This was a total submersion. It was as if his body and even his spiritual energy were purified by the call of nature. And all the impurities were cleansed from within, completely disappearing. In comparison, the demon's condition wasn't good. All of their brows were furrowed, and their bodies were emitting a black gas from while they were trying to resist the natural energy from their surroundings. If not for Huang Shuo's instructions, they would already have lashed out, trying to destroy the surrounding vegetation. The nature was full of the world's vitality, whereas darkness was full of shadows and coldness, so an incompatibility between these two entities was unavoidable. Huang Shuo said to Ling Xiao, walk a bit faster if you can. My clansmen and me don't like this place. If it takes too long, I won't be able to guarantee that I can control them long enough. Ling Xiao gave the calm reply, just give it a try then. Although our cooperation is only temporary, we won't resort to any tricks since you fulfilled your promise. I will just repeat once again that this is the residence of the goddess of nature. It won't be a breach of our agreement if you damage the environment here, and the illusory shrine forbids you entry. Huang Shuo wrinkled his brows, but quickly returned to normal. Nodding calmly, he didn't say anything more. In the forest, the road was rugged and hard to pass, but this didn't affect the progress of these powerhouses. Before departing, Ling Xiao had repeatedly warned the forces of the alliance that they mustn't damage the plants here no matter what, or it would be regarded as hostility against the illusory forest. This was an ocean of vegetations, which may even be called an ocean of flowers. As far as the eye could see, only shrubs, roughly one meter high, seemed to occupy the area in a radius of a hundred square kilometers. On top of these shrubs grew various kind of flowers, each one more beautiful than the one next to it, while each of them was exceptionally enchanting. At every step they took, a different kind of smell could be perceived. In addition, some mist had formed in the air, making the sunshine of this day look a lot less dazzling. Hazy and soft lusters undulated in this world of flowers. It was truly worthy of being described as illusory. Inside of this ocean of flowers extended a small lake. It wasn't large in size, however over the approximative 200 meters diameter it extended, the water essence was even richer, and the aura of life gently spread outwards, from it. Ling Xiao stopped walking, looking at the nearby lake, we have arrived, this is precisely the place. Huang Shuo looked at him with some hesitation, where is the illusory shrine? Ling Xiao replied, it's right inside the lake. What? Huang Shuo replied, don't tell me that we'll have to dive underwater. Contrarily to what one may expect, their black dragon race didn't have any reluctance toward water, and could even drago form inside of water. Ling Xiao replied with some disdain, diving underwater is indeed a way to access the illusory shrine. You can try it if you want, but do you think it would be so simple to access a place that only opens once every hundred years? If this was only about diving underwater, why would we even have to wait hundred years? Huang Shuo asked with some doubt, what's there in this water? Is it a seal? Ling Xiao responded, why should I tell you without compensation? As he said this, he extended his right hand towards Huang Shuo. Some changes appeared on Huang Shuo's unresigned face, but still, he took something out of a storage and placed it in Ling Xiao's hand. Looking at the object, Ling Xiao's ordinarily strict face immediately revealed a rare smile, followed with the calm words, All good, let me tell you. In the water of this lake exists an almighty antique entity. From the records we have, this was the guardian of the goddess of nature back in the past. It lived here for at least several thousands of years. If you are not afraid of death, you can dive underwater and look for yourself at the strength of this almighty entity over here. Huang Shuo revealed surprise, a magical beast from the antique times. Do you know to what race it belongs to? Ling Xiao extended his hand yet another time, and although the nearby Han Qian raised his head, the former didn't manage to conceal the smile on his face. Huang Shuo declared in anger, don't be excessive. Ling Xiao revealed an unexpectedly innocent look, you can also stop asking, you know. Resisting the urge to show his fury, Huang Shuo took out another piece of the same thing as before, placing it in N. Ling Xiao's hand, speak. Ling Xiao's facial expression changed slowly, muttering silently, but resolutely, telling you isn't much, in this lake resides a fairy dragon. Huang Shuo let out a ragged breath, his originally furious face returning to normal. With a nod he said, thank you. Right at that moment Ling Xiao felt something abnormal, how could this fellow so easily hand over two pieces of dragon ointment, just to exchange it for these two pieces of information? From his appearance, it seems as if he didn't suffer any loss. 
Could there be a problem about the fact that I gave him that information? He couldn't help but feel some regret deep inside, but since everything was already said and done, it is already too late for regret. Huang Shuo said. Since a fairy dragon resides in the lake, how should we enter? Ling Xiao replied, in at most one day, the illusory shrine will open anew. At that time, a passage to the shore will be formed. We will just have to pass through it to enter the illusory paradise. With a thoughtful look, Huang Shuo responded, let's just wait and see. Saying that, he led the group of demon powerhouses to sit nearby. When they arrived together at this lakeside housing the illusory shrine, the aura of nature had started to corrode them gradually. Hundreds of buildings started to surround the place, giving rise to a very peaceful scene. The Temple Alliance's forces did the same, everyone sat in succession, waiting for the opening of the illusory shrine. Long Houchen inadvertently looked in the direction of the demons, happening to meet with the charismatic Yu Yi's eyes. He also met Ling Xiao's gaze. However, the two of these girls gave him completely different looks. Yu Yi was beaming with a smile, filled with gentleness and warmth, just as if she was looking at her lover. But Ling Xiao had a very fierce look, as if her eyes were going to pierce Long Houchen. Yu Yi's expression suddenly changed. She turned her head instantly, because she felt Kia's gaze on her. Ling Xiao however was looking at Long Houchen and Kia without any fear, even showing her own clenched fist. Seated in front of Yu Yi and Ling Xiao was a youth, who looked to be the leader of the demon group heading into the illusory paradise. With a tall build, he looked about twenty in appearance, and the most peculiar thing about him was that he not only had black hair, but also black eyes. He calmly sat there, cross-legged and very serene, as if the aura surrounding his body was non-existent. Long Houchen's look was very naturally attracted by this black-haired, black-eyed youth, feeling an intense threat from the counterpart's tranquil state. That youth seemed to have felt Long Houchen's attentive watch, because he slowly turned his head. At the split second their gazes met, all Long Houchen saw was nothingness, while the black-haired youth saw only purity. However, at the first time they looked at each other, they unexpectedly didn't have any hostility towards each other, as if they weren't natural enemies. This black-haired, black-eyed youth looked extremely handsome, and seeing him, Long Houchen seemed to have a familiar feeling of deja vu, just as if he had seen him before in some place. The look of that youth suddenly became cold, and he emitted a sharp murderous intent. However, Long Houchen could feel that this killing intent was forcefully set free, and didn't contain any actual desire to kill. What's the matter with him? Could it be that I have seen him before? However, Long Houchen felt very confident toward his own memory, and didn't remember having seen this youth ever before. Turning his head away, and not looking at his counterpart anymore, Long Houchen slowly closed his eyes, and let himself be immersed in this place filled with nature. While the others felt the aura of nature weaken here, it was exactly the opposite for Long Houchen. He discovered that although the aura of nature seemed weaker close to the lake, it was extremely pure. Thus it gave one the feeling of being weakened by it. This was because the pure aura of nature rejected humans in general. As if fearing to be soiled by their impurity, it was unwilling to approach them. The purest aura of nature flowed through Long Houchen's body, purifying it while providing moisture. A fantastic feeling of understanding started to emerge from this, and indistinctly, Long Houchen felt himself grabbing onto something. Gradually, his heart became more and more tranquil. In the good meaning, as this character also means dream in Chinese time past minute, after minute, and hour after hour, the two parties consisting of powerhouses didn't fear the wait. The sky was gradually becoming dimmer, until nightfall came. With night's descent, the air cooled down while the natural humidity went up. A day and a night passed like that. When the sky started to go white, Huang Shuo started to stand up, looking at Ling Xiao. It had already been a day and a night, but the illusory shrine didn't show any signs of appearing. Right at that moment, a marvelous sensation passed over everyone's head. Originally immersed in cultivating, everyone simultaneously reacted in the same way. They all looked in the direction from where the change occurred. The surrounding space distorted slightly, and the smell of nature suddenly became thicker. Everyone felt a great amount of vitality being absorbed through their mouths. Even the demons finally started to have a cozy feeling from this. Above the lake, tiny ripples started to appear, growing larger and larger, and in the middle of the lake, a gush of water started to sprout. At this time, the omnipresent essence of life began to converge from all directions. With the arrival of dawn, the illusory shrine slowly rose above the lake. Gradually, a dark green palace emerged from the lake, and the clear water from the lake ran off in rivulets. Its transparence reflected the green color of the palace. Under the brilliance of dawn, it seemed to radiate all around, and as it gradually rose, the vital essence in the surrounding reached its peak. All the surrounding plants reacted to it, growing at a monstrous speed. Gradually, the shrubs that didn't even exceed a meter in height, grew up until exceeding the humans and demons in size, 
and the fragrance of flowers also became heavier. Finally, this dark green colored palace sat on top of the water's surface, the instant the sun finally rose into view. The orange glow of the sun illuminated the illusory palace and gilded this shrine of nature. A faint steam revolved around the shrine, slowly dissolving under the radiance of the sun. After being reflected by the emerald shrine, the haze amplified the dreamy character of this fantastic scene. Light and water themselves were the symbols of life. This was a scene that stunned everyone, and that no one dared to budge, because it was truly too beautiful. When seeing such a beautiful scenery, everyone seemed to have forgotten the danger they were going to face. The illusory shrine had an extraordinary appearance, differing from every existing building on the continent. It didn't have walls in the common sense of the word. The outside was covered by layers of green crystals, that became bigger and bigger towards the bottom. All around the base, they stretched out in all directions, just like the eaves of a cathedral. Although light elemental fairies focused their worship on the god of light, the elements of light, water and earth were all extremely close to the goddess of nature. Therefore, the goddess of nature could be said to be a partial master to them. Returning to this place filled with natural energy and feeling the embrace of nature, how could Yating remain calm? She could clearly feel her own vital energy rising, while the golden radiance in her body circulated like tidal waves. Although it became calmer with time, her originally partially transparent body was becoming opaque, looking very close to a human's. Compared to the time Long Houchen had just made a contract with her, the vital energy flowing through Yating was tremendous. She had even evolved twice by relying on Long Houchen's physique as the sign of light. However, the origin for her weak state was the mortal wound she had suffered back then. All this time, she had had to rely on the saint spiritual stove to appease it. But at this very moment, in front of the illusory shrine of the goddess of nature, her body gained an extreme nourishment, and the internal injuries in her body were healed in no time through the intense vital energy. It also laid a firm foundation for her next evolution. A gentle green radiance spread in the air, giving rise to this fantastic scene. Perhaps, because of the influence of the massive energy of life spread by the illusory shrine, the vegetation on the shore grew suddenly at a great speed, especially the shrubs located nearest to the lake. In the midst of their frantic growth, the illusory shrine rose from the lake. The lake was now completely surrounded by thick and solid shrubs, that looked extremely tough and durable. It was indeed strange, but these shrubs kept growing until they reached the height of the illusory shrine. Stopping at this point, it was as if they didn't dare keep growing further. Ling Xiao gave a glance to the leader of the Imperial Black Dragon Guard Huang Shuo, instructing in a low voice, it is now possible to enter. Numerous chances are awaiting inside. Huang Shuo nodded, turning back, before directing a look at the black-clad youth, who had shared eye contact with Long Houchen just before. The latter then walked up in front of him, before giving a calm nod, a bow, be careful. Yeah. The black-clad youth gave a simple reply. A light tap on ground with his toes sent him flying high in the air. Yu Yi, Ling Xiao, as well as the other participating demons followed him one after another. On the other side, the humans followed in their tracks Long Houchen and Kia were comparatively at the end of their own group, while the two groups of ten entered the illusory shrine. The shrubs growing around the lake were extremely tough, giving their feet a firm and steady foothold as they walked on top of them. Both parties crossed the shore like that. A bow. So this guy is called a bow. Long Houchen had heard Huang Shuo's voice very clearly. He hadn't seen this black-clad youth clearly, but as the leader of the demon group, his actual strength and ability couldn't be low. The ten of the side of the Temple Alliance didn't have a specific leader. After entering the illusory shrine, everyone would do things their own way. The two groups, which were designed entirely differently, now moved at a distance of about ten meters, walking over towards the small gap between the massive pillars. Pulling Kia's hand, Long Houchen followed the others towards the shrine from behind, telling her in a low voice, Kia, our main task will be to reunite after entering. If you face any danger, don't try to be brave no matter what. Just activate the illusory gem, and leave the illusory paradise. Seeing his deep concern, her lips formed into a beautiful arc, followed by her low voice, don't worry. Because I have you, I won't act rashly. Long Houchen held her by the waist, as the two of them entered the illusory shrine in the proper sense. They were also the last ones to enter. Right after they entered the illusory shrine, their view was filled with a boundless green color. An illusory coloration of green was reflected in their eyes. It was totally devoid of anything else than green. The soft green radiance appeared the same as the most primitive form of life, undulations rising up and down in the rhythm of their breath. 
Just as Ling Xiao had told them, only after walking through this green brilliance, they would truly be entering the illusory paradise. With a step forward into the glint of light, Long Haochen and Kia both disappeared into this green brilliance. Having just gone into that radiance, Long Haochen immediately felt a soft current of spiritual energy wrapping him in its embrace, and Kia whose hand was originally held by him disappeared. The surrounding green grew even more intense, but everything seemed to be happening far behind him. It was exactly the same as when traveling by flight on the back of a magical beast. Long Haochen shut his eyes, surrounded by a bunch of changes. He noticed that his mental energy was unable to force the soft energy protecting him apart. A short time later, everything suddenly became clear again. After taking a sudden step forward, he was already in another world. The chirps of the birds and insects refreshed his mind with a tranquil feeling. Meanwhile, outside of the illusory shrine, the surrounding green light slowly disappeared, transforming into a mild green colored ball of light floating over his shoulder. Ling Xiao had told him before that if he wanted to return from the illusory shrine, he would need to pour at least 5,000 units of spiritual energy into this ball of light. Only after this would he be able to go through the last trial of the illusory paradise, and after passing, he would be able to return smoothly. But if instead, he used the illusory gem, he would however be able to return immediately. High in the sky, the twenty scattering lights immediately attracted Long Haochen's attention. Of course, he knew what these were. Ling Xiao had warned them carefully that these colored lights were the spiritual stoves that had appeared in the sky as soon as they entered the illusory paradise, before scattering all over the illusory paradise. However, Long Haochen didn't immediately get into motion, but only watched attentively. After memorizing the rough location of these lights, he stirred the internal spiritual energy in his chest. Honestly speaking, Long Haochen was enormously nervous at that time. He was uncertain on whether he would be able to connect with the Tower of Eternity. After all, this was a place controlled by the Goddess of Nature, and the Tower of Eternity was made by a necromancer. Even if it went as he expected, the Tower of Eternity in itself was a weapon, and as such it was certainly incompatible with the power of the Goddess of Nature. Under these circumstances, it was hard to predict whether they would be able to connect with the Tower of Eternity. In case he failed, all their previous plans would have been for naught. This was also the reason why Long Haochen and Kia entered together, and the important reason why Long Haochen didn't tell Kia to concede in the competition. Kia entered the illusory paradise together with him, so even if he didn't manage to connect with the Tower of Eternity, there would at least be two people from their team able to fight for a few spiritual stoves. If conversely, it was only him, he would certainly not be able to grab more than one. After all, Ling Xiao had informed them already about the severity of the last trial. With a faint twinkle of brilliant light, Long Haochen's eyes wore an ice-cold expression, and a golden brilliance started to be released from the area around his chest, precisely from the eternal melody. This illusory paradise was rich of the four main elements, light, water, earth, and the rare and unseen wood element, exclusive to the nature. This made a great variety of elements. The wood element was especially powerful in places with a great amount of vegetation, but would become greatly weakened in places without it. Because of its tight connection with nature, it also got called the energy of life. The spiritual stoves that had just spread into the air were for the greater part related to these four elements. As he was currently immersed in connecting with the eternal melody, a dense light essence surged out from Long Haochen's chest, causing the burning feeling coming from within to become increasingly intense and all the surroundings to blur. Following next, a familiar death energy filled the air, crowding around his body, and the eternal melody started to absorb the light element exclusive to the Tower of Eternity to help him regain his spiritual energy. Success Greatly overjoyed, Long Haochen rushed in the Tower of Eternity. His comrades had entered the tower at their top condition, but after waiting for him for a long time in this place filled with death energy, each of them was itching to go out. Seeing Long Haochen appear there, they were immediately excited, Boss, did it work? Sima Zian asked in a hurry. Long Haochen nodded in response, there shouldn't be any problems. It's just that in the process of transporting myself here, I spent quite an amount of spiritual energy. Bringing you back there with me will very possibly even increase this consumption, so I will first cultivate to recover and then, will immediately leave. Time wouldn't stop for them, thus in all likelihood, those in the illusory palace surely had already started to move. If they didn't hurry back, the benefits would likely fall into others' hands. After all, there were only that many spiritual stoves, and no one would be satisfied with just one. Sitting cross-legged, Long Haochen let his mental force loose, rapidly recovering his spiritual energy. However, even given his cultivation rate, 
he would need no less than half an hour to regain his previously consumed spiritual energy without Yating's help. Lin Xin, give me some great recovery pills. I still don't know how much spiritual energy will be necessary to transport you back. After receiving the great recovery pills from Lin Xin, Long Haochen led his comrades outside of the Tower of Eternity, immediately launching the teleportation. As he justly expected, transporting them back was very challenging and came with an immense consumption. Only after taking six great recovery pills consecutively, and with almost nothing left of the spiritual energy in his body, they were finally transported surrounded by a golden glow. With a radiant flash, a rich and fresh air immediately assaulted their faces, giving everyone a great shock. Is this the illusory paradise? It's really beautiful. Chen Yinger said in high praise. Long Haochen replied, follow me closely. We have to immediately look for the spiritual stoves. We are already quite late, so let's hope that we'll have good luck. Let's go. Saying that, he didn't even take the time to recover his spiritual energy, immediately leading his comrades by giving them directives about the directions. Meanwhile, he also called out the light element fairy Yating to help him recover his spiritual energy. In an environment such as the illusory paradise, his recovery of spiritual energy was a lot faster than in the Tower of Eternity. With the overactivity of both the eternal melody and Yating, and the further addition of his spiritual cavities, he didn't have to rest. After all, he only had consumed spiritual energy and was mentally completely unfaced. Although Kia wasn't present, the six of them still maintained their habitual battle formation. In the front was Long Haochen, Sima Xian and Wang Yuanyuan covered the two flanks, and Lin Xian as well as Chen Yinger were in the middle, with Hen Yu protecting the back. The illusory paradise could be really called a heavenly paradise. Everywhere they passed, various rare and precious plants could be seen, and Lin Xin frequently told everyone to stop to pick up some of the precious plants he recognized. Seeing his eyes beam with smiles, anyone could tell out that they had a considerable value. Long Haochen didn't press him. Regarding his comrades, the most important thing during this trip for him would be their safe return. Under these circumstances, the major premise was to find a way to accomplish that while getting some benefits. These herbal treasures could directly be harvested, and would thus be naturally given priority. As for the spiritual stoves, it would require them to test their luck. Everyone walked and stopped successively like that. Since they were following a precise direction anyway, they just kept advancing forward. It was indeed impossible to fly in the illusory paradise. Even Yating who fit into this environment perfectly, could at most fly around 5 meters high before being drawn to the ground. However, having her around was a great help to Long Haochen. After their arrival here, Yating's ability seemed to have strengthened to a great extent her condensing spiritual halo was nearly twice as effective as in the past. In no more than a quarter of an hour, Long Haochen's consumption of spiritual energy was completely replenished. And through Yating, Long Haochen's senses seemed to have grown sharper. He could now perceive the undulation of spiritual energy within the scope of a thousand meters. Around them were many fantastic precious plants, and a very clear stream flowed through the forest, from which occasionally a faint fog arose, that would give a feeling of hazy beauty to everyone. But that fog wasn't a mixture of dirt and condensed water, but formed from pure liquid elements. The faintly golden-colored light element, the faintly green-colored wood element, the faintly blue-colored water element, and the faintly yellow-colored earth element. Occasionally, the colors corresponding to the other elements could also be seen. This scene was exceptionally beautiful, just like in a dream. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.